Hey there, my name is Anthony Romano, and I'm going to tell you in this video why it's not a good idea to use whey protein before workouts. Okay, so part of this video is to promote my free guide on using whey protein, especially in a ketogenic bodybuilding context. But even if you're not a keto person or a fasting person, right, or an intermittent fasting person, I'm telling you, if you download this guide, it is going to inform you so much on all the little cheat codes and little hacks when it comes to using whey protein in a bodybuilding and fitness context. So basically with any fat loss or muscle building goal, it's going to give you a lot of helpful tips from somebody who's been doing at least keto bodybuilding for eight years, but bodybuilding for longer than that, coaching people for longer than that, you know, working in the supplement industry for years. Bottom line, there's plenty for you to learn in that guide and I highly recommend that you download it. But I'm going to tell you in this video some really quick points that might open your eyes to some new mechanisms and nuances of using whey protein. All right, so let's get into this. Why don't you want to use whey protein before a workout? Let's, I'm gonna start off with you know my keto and fasting folks here and addressing that, so just stay with me here. A lot of people on keto are afraid of you know using whey protein because the insulin spike is going to turn off fat burning, and that is true. You, if you're doing a fat loss diet and you're using whey protein every couple hours or something, stop, okay? It doesn't matter if it's not a keto diet, stop doing that because the insulin spike is going to turn off fat burning. Now, if you use it after a workout, you generally avoid that problem and all of the insulin is going to go towards building muscle tissue, okay? Insulin's an anabolic hormone. It wants to build things. It doesn't care what it's building. It just is going to build stuff. And whatever you time it is basically the context, right? Insulin is like construction workers. Basically, they're gonna, they can build you know, beautiful mansions or they could build DMVs, okay? They can build places you don't want to go. Insulin doesn't know what it wants to build, it just follows orders. And the context, so did you just work out? Did you just wake up, right? Do you eat good in general? Those things are going to affect how the protein is actually gonna be processed in your body and what that insulin spike is going to do. So, essentially for the keto crowd here, insulin spike first thing in the morning, not a good idea. Insulin spike after a workout, better idea. But you know, there's little nuances and you can watch my keto videos on whey protein to assess that. Or you can download my free guide, okay? Same with all you, you know, other lifting crowd or fitness minded people here, okay? So if you're one of those people, don't hesitate to get the guide even if it has the word keto in that and that scares you. But let's get into why you don't want whey protein before a workout in any context. Well, the primary reason is related to that insulin spike. So sugar is generally what releases insulin. Insulin is released to lower your blood sugar and to shuttle nutrients into your muscles. So amino acids, you know, glucose, other things you'd want in your muscles and your organs. And essentially, insulin does act like a carrier. So when we're, you know, aware that the two main primary spikers of insulin are protein and carb, you know, now you know that's what's gonna create an insulin rise. But here's the thing, carbs jack up your insulin way more than protein does, with the exception of whey protein. Like, it's literally the exception and that's why I made a whole guide on it. So, there are actually disadvantageous scenarios where you could be using whey protein first thing in the morning during a cutting phase, and that's basically going to jack up your insulin, which is going to lower your blood sugar. And if you're somebody who's on a carb diet, starting off the day with a whey protein shake may be a very bad decision because if you have just that shake your blood sugar crashes and then guess what a couple hours later you're hungry because you're in a low blood glucose state so that's as in my willpower video i've explained i i, I already know i didn't feel like putting the thumbnail up there so it's probably not there but my key my willpower video in relation to blood sugar and keto explains that your willpower moment to moment equals your blood sugar so if you have anything that tanks your blood sugar that's what's going to <laughs> affect how much discipline you have in the moment, how much willpower, willpower. So starting off the morning with a whey protein shake in and of itself in isolation, maybe not the best idea unless you're somebody with stable blood sugar. Some keto people can get away with this, keto bulk people can get away with this, but let's go to just all fat loss purposes, right? No matter what kind of diet you like doing. If you have that whey protein after a workout, again, 
not much to worry about. It's probably going to go all towards building muscle tissue, repairing, and your body's in such, if you work out intensely, your body is basically not going to be even able to store fat for the next hour after that. So that's good. Now, what's more of the bad here? More of the bad is even if you have, you know, people, especially the keto crowd, try to mix things into the whey protein shake. People mixing fat in there, it can slow the digestion, but that's generally not a good idea because it can cause, you know, you have two foods of very different digestive speeds going into your gut at the same time. You have whey protein, which digests massively quick, and then you have fats, which tend to digest very slow. So even though protein and fat digest perfectly well together, for some people that can create some digestive problems because it's such a stark, stark contrast between the two. And for basically one of the things in your gut, basically if you have the protein after having some slow digesting stuff, it might not digest as quickly as it should and the dairy might ferment in your gut, give you some gas. That goes for anything basically. And for the people mixing this with carbs, in general, especially people who mix fruit smoothies into whey protein, mixing a bunch of fructose in there is probably not the best idea. Having a high insulin spike at the same time you have sugar is, I mean, it can balance out that sort of blood sugar effect, right? Which is generally, for some people, that could be a great tactic. In fact, yeah, that's probably one of the better ways to mitigate this sort of, you know, whey protein induced blood sugar crash. But the main way a lot of the flexible dieters are going to benefit from using whey protein one we're not talking about after a workout is if you have it after a meal because it can essentially assist in transporting glucose into your muscles and basically if you have you know a carb meal and then you have whey protein it can assist in that but it can also minimize the sort of blood sugar spike you might have had from simply having that meal with carbs in it and then not having whey protein so basically if you have whey protein in the context of a carb diet having it with a meal might even be beneficial to fat loss because it's going to basically stabilize that blood sugar. The extra insulin, which the protein provides is going to help, you know, basically suppress an overexcited glucose response. So for people who have a lot of weight to lose, that could be a viable option for people who are highly athletic. Maybe your body probably has a good ability already to transport glucose. You probably have a good insulin sensitivity, the ability for your cells to take uptake insulin. And so that's kind of one area, okay? So overall, I've kind of given you a couple scenarios. I've given you fat loss overall. I've given you fat loss on keto. Generally mixing whey protein with a meal is more optimal than starting off the day with it on its own if you're prioritizing fat loss. If you're doing a bulk, hey, it probably isn't the worst idea to do that, especially for somebody with good insulin sensitivity, somebody who is athletic, somebody who is in a muscle building phase and you're already in pretty good shape. Okay, so I'm not trying to demonize protein in any one scenario. And if you have specific questions about this, ask them in the comments because there's so much to say about whey protein and most of those questions are probably answered in this guide. So literally I have a page in there that actually explains, you know, every scenario. It's the cheat sheet page in that guide. It's completely free where it's basically, you know, in this scenario, this diet, this goal, it's optimal to have protein at this time. It's less optimal this time. And it's not optimal at all to have it at this scenario this time. So that is all explained in there. And there's even a cheat sheet, which just skips you right to the answers. And then I also have full explanations of these things. I'm just trying to give you some cheat codes to work with right now. Okay. So thank you for watching this video. I hope it helped you out when it comes to having whey protein before workouts. Last thing I will say is that for the people who are having whey protein before workouts and you're trying to get that extra amino acid concentration in your blood while you're working out in your bloodstream, essentially essential amino acids would be a better option for such a purpose because basically they aren't going to jack up your insulin as much. BCAs are still great, but they might have some of that insulinogenic effect. This is just a great one I use and all the products I use link to the description because I only use high quality stuff. I only use luxury products that have the cleanest sweeteners, the cleanest filler ingredients, nothing that's going to be problematic at all. In fact, no filler <laughs> ingredients really. So everything listed there is top notch and overall for essential amino acids, that would be much better of an idea to actually implement pre-workout or during workout, right? BCAs as well, but if you're somebody who's doing fat loss, you know, there's kind of this um, just diminished insulin spike and the extra amino acids will help, you know, your body actually to utilize the anabolic primarily amino acids, leucine, isoleucine, valine. So the BCAs. So 
this was a very crammed video and I try to keep it under 10 minutes. I'm pretty happy about that. So download the guide, no matter who you are, it's free. Okay. It's free. Download it. It's going to answer a lot of questions about whey protein, especially for keto people. But even if you're not a keto person, click it, download it. It's going to give you a lot of knowledge about whey protein and you shouldn't let just the ketogenic stuff in there scare you. And then you should go watch my other videos and you should have already subscribed to me, but you can do that right now if you haven't and like the video and follow my Instagram. That is it for this one. Okay. Anthony Romano. Peace. Oh,